Hi, my name is Amber and I'm the account executive here at WaveRes. Today we are going to go over a basic tutorial of how to use WaveRes for first timers that have no experience with the system. So first you're going to want to navigate to reservations.waveres.com. Mine says log out. It's just because I just logged out, but you can just go to reservations.waveres.com and hit enter. It's going to take you to the login page. So we're going to use my test account for this purpose so that you will see an admin view as you would see it instead of a support level view. So we're going to go ahead and sign in. Once you're signed in here, you're going to be presented with your landing page, your home page. Um, you can customize what you want your home page to be as far as which view you would like, but we have it set on the matrix view. So we're going to kind of dive into everything here piece by piece through the menu. So starting with the menu itself, it can be minimized over to the side and it comes out when you hover over it. Now I prefer to keep it out all the time, but that's just me. The WaveRes emblem on the top left hand corner is clickable. It will take you back to your home page. This little icon here of a calendar if you click on the icon of the calendar, you'll be taken to the calendar overlay. So this is where you can navigate throughout the system from day to day, week to week, month to month, and see what you have already on the books. Now, it shows the current day as blue, the 11th of October, and any day that has a reservation will be green, including past days, they have a green slant through them to indicate that they are past, but they had a reservation on that day. Now you can go back and click on any one of these days to take you directly to it. Or you can also go forward and see what you have as well as click on any one of these days. You can click on the actual month itself. It will take you to the year. So you can browse through different years if you want to jump to a specific day and time. So uh, as a side note, you can also get to this calendar view right here. I almost clicked on it earlier trying to show you in this video, but you can get to that calendar view by clicking on the date at the top of the matrix as well. So we'll just navigate back to home here. So going down the list, we'll follow down this menu here. We'll start with the dashboard. This is an admin only view that if only if you're an admin or owner will be able to see the dashboard. The dashboard contains information about sales. So it's bookings, sales, discounts, and stuff like that. It defaults to the current day, but you can choose a week or a month. If you select a year, it will give you a warning because it is a lot of data to pull, so it might take a few seconds. So they might give you a little warning, make sure you want to do it because it does take a few seconds to pull up. So that is an overview of dashboard. It just basically gives you some revenue information. On the manifest, you'll see daily and hourly. Rentals, you'll see matrix view and tours. And these are the four different views that we have. And we did see those back on the home page. Our matrix view is our home page, but you can navigate to the different views by going here and just simply clicking on a different view, as well as navigating from the menu. You can do that as well. Now orders. Well, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go through the different views. So on hourly manifest, first let's find a day that has some bookings. So on hourly manifest, you will have your reservations broken down by departure hour. So we see that we have one boat, um, 24 foot pontoon rental departing at 9 a.m. and three jet skis departing at 10 a.m. This breaks it down, like I said, by the hour. It does not separate by trips. All trips will be in the same departure hour if they are departing on that hour or schedule time. Daily manifest breaks things down by trips as well as departure time. So this will be, it looks similar because we only have one pontoon rental leaving at 9 a.m. But if we had another leaving at 10, it would not be in this list. It would be below this list as a second item or a third item in this case. 
So that is the daily manifest. And you can click on orders to go directly in. If you're on a phone, you can click on the telephone number. You can change statuses from here as well as print receipts, boarding passes, um, go directly into the order details, but you can do that by clicking on the name as well or add a payment. So you can add a payment from this view. Now that's just what you can do for an order outside of the order. You can swap the equipment, send messages to customers, print and another customer manifest for this particular boat. So if there were multiple people on one boat, then that would be the one you'd want to choose. Now send messages to customers. This allows you to send texts and emails. This is a very popular feature we have because you can reach out to people in mass um, about certain things. So we can send text messages, say a weather related something we want to send out, let people know there's going to be a delay. We can do that here. And you can send messages to all anything that is below this dark line here. So this heading here would send messages to those customers if you chose them. So there's only one on the list here, but there's only one customer. So that's why. So you do get that option. You can add a note as well. If you'd like to add a note to this particular um, 24 foot pontoon rental time and day, this would add a note for anybody to see throughout the system. You can add notes to the entire day as well, and they'll be displayed on the top. So if we hit save here, you can see that we'll have a note. Um, this is a great way for admins to let employees know in mass if there's something specific going on for this day that they need to know about. And you can add additional notes as well as edit or delete notes. And this is, allows you to send customers or send messages to customers for the entire day. So not just any one time or equipment, but the entire day in whole. Now, if we move on to matrix view, this is one of the best views in my opinion, very powerful for rental companies, especially. So you can see right here, just from the reservations that I have that I can see any open holes with any equipment that I have. So if I have a walk up, somebody asks me, you know, do you have three skis available at 10? No, I don't. I have two. And I can see that right now from here, which is quick and easy especially when you have a lot of equipment and it's the summer and there's only one open little hole. So very handy to have the matrix use a powerful tool as well as being able to create an order directly from just clicking on this block. So, you know, if there was a reservation here, they extend here and another one here and another one here, I could just select this one right here that's available. I can see very quickly and easily, you know, I have one ski available, um, a jet ski for it's available at 11 a.m for one and two hours. Hovering over it tells me what I have available. If it's blocked, it blocks it off because anything that departed at 9 a.m. would interfere with a 10 a.m. departure, as well as anything after, but it will just extend to its full length. So you can only choose what is available. The system does not allow overbooking. Um, it's very firm on those rules, no overbooking, as well as back-to-back arrivals and departures, um, it's not considered okay with the system. It is considered overbooking, but we can work around that if that is your preference. So like I said, you can hover over anything and see what is available at that particular equipment, time, date, very specific. So other things that we have on this screen are our start time and close out time. Close out time is the last time a boat can be out till. You can edit that by just clicking on this. Um, that'll only edit the close out time for this particular day. There are default settings as well as calendar control settings to close, to adjust close out times for large day ranges. Larger than one day that is, it's just more convenient. And you can reach out to support for this, or if you do know how to use counter controls, it's very easy to do as well. Now, there are a few other settings on here. And this enable disable button you'll see is consistently throughout the system. This is a quick toggle to be able to turn off your online reservations. So if there was a re weather related issue, I know there's going to be delays. It's earlier in the morning. I want to make sure that I don't overbook. 
which is very common for jet skis and pontoons, have weather related problems here in Florida. So I can quickly click this button um, that is going to disable all of my trips for online bookings. This is not going to allow anybody but internal staff to make or adjust any bookings. Um, and this also includes TripShock as well. If you are affiliated with TripShock, it will shut that down for you too. So no reservations will come in at all. And it is very quick and easy to change and revert back by just clicking the button. Now, as you notice, each one has a its own enable disable. If I didn't want to disable everything, like I just want to disable my pontoons because they're the ones experiencing my current setbacks, I can just disable the pontoons. Or you know, specifically, if I'm trying to shut down just pontoons on Wednesdays, I can use disable online bookings for that and, and still offer some flexibility if I decide to rent one or two on Wednesday. I can do that by just disabling them online and then as Tuesday rolls around, I decide I want to open up Wednesday, I just click that button. So simple, easy to revert, very easy to change. And doesn't mess with your custom schedules, ticket options, anything that you have set up um, other than default. So on the tours view, this is one of our newer views. This is a overview of the tour. So the tour has many different times set up for it, but currently we just have that 5 p.m. time available as I can see. It gives me a count of how many are available in total and how many are taken out of that total. So we haven't had any reservations in this week that it's showing for this tour, so it just says 75, 75 available. Um, and it shows my other times as disabled. And you can make a reservation for a tour in the tour view as well. Um, if you would prefer a tour be on the matrix view, we can keep a tour on the matrix view. It's very simple to operate from the matrix as well. Um, some would say somewhat more comfortable to operate on the matrix view um, from some of our people that have been around for a while. But we do offer that tour view. So when I click on that, just like the matrix, it's going to take me directly into booking. It's going to skip that basic info screen and just give me that day, time, and I would choose my tickets. So we'll pop back to uh, the tour view here. Now, they each have their own refresh button. The screen does not refresh automatically due to the nature of the data contained in the screen. So if you have frequent bookings, you might want to just refresh them to see what's currently available. If you click on something that doesn't allow you in, it's most likely already booked out and that's why it's not letting you book it. Again, the system is very serious about not overbooking. It makes it easy for you, really. So moving on into creating a new booking. We've made it back to the matrix view screen and we just want to create a booking or let's let's go with that 11 a.m. jet ski four. We have a one and two hour. We just want to book a two hour. So we're going to click on that. And again, it's going to take us into that jet ski rental. We have the date, time, exact thing that we just clicked on the matrix view. Alternatively, you can click on new reservation. And it's going to bring you that basic info screen where you're going to choose your date and time and schedule. So. On here, we'll select our jet ski rental for tomorrow, and we want to do 11 a.m. So next. Now we're back here to the tickets option screen. And we would select our ticket. It's going to autofill the first available equipment according to priority, which uh, support staff will set up to, for you whenever we create your account. But it's going to go to that first available priority equipment which in this case is Jet Ski 4. And if I wanted to add another ticket to this order, say they want two jet skis, I can add another ticket, select a one hour rental and Jet Ski 5. Now I know from looking at the matrix that I only have two jet skis available at this day and time. So if I were to add another ticket, you're gonna see that 
it's not going to let me. You have selected all the possible combinations. It's letting you know that there are not any more available equipment. You can't add an additional one. So options is a place where we can customize settings, like custom questions um, about all kinds of things um, from anything that you charge for extras to things that you don't like life tests, voters tests, something like that. So on here, it's not required. If it was required, it would be red. We can set up required options. If they are required for your customers, they will be required internally. I'm just going to go ahead and answer it for the purpose of this video. And then comments here, we can add any partner comments if we want to make you know, special arrangements for somebody on this trip or they have something they need to tell us about, we can put that in there. Or we can even just ask about jet ski sizes um, or life vest sizes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Whenever we're making the reservation, we can put those in there. Now, going on to next, we have the contact payment info screen. So we have first name, last name, phone number is required. Everything else is optional. Again, the system points out what is required. Internally, it's only first name, last name, phone number. Externally, there's a lot more information we'll go over when we take a look at the booking portal. So for this, I'm just going to hit walk up so that it kind of blanks this all out for me so I don't have to fill in anything, but you would just type in their info. Um, you can choose to send a text confirmation or not, or an email confirmation or not. And you'd have to have their email for the email confirmation. And then you're going to choose your payment type. So the default payment type standardly is credit card. Ours is set to card hold, but you can change it by just clicking on the change button or really anywhere on the payment option. And then it'll give you a list of payment options. The waiver is credit card. That's the one that's default for everyone when we first set up your account, but you can select any other option as well as any right here. This is a custom created option, CC external terminal. Um, that's something we have set up, which we can do that as well. So we'll just select a cash for the purpose of this video and complete booking. It's gonna ask us how much cash we're just going to put in 200 and it's going to give us a change that we owe to the customer. All right, so now we've completed the order and now we're in the confirmation screen. From here, we can do print options. So if you have a printer hooked up, you can do tickets, receipts, receipts and tickets, boarding pass, and print all those from there. If not, you can check in the customer. If they're a walk up, you can go ahead and click check in and check them in. If not, you can go ahead and view the order if you'd like. And inside of the order screen, we'll touch on that now. We have this big button over here. This is actually clickable. You can click on it to change the status. This current account is not set to auto confirm. So that's why it just says paid. So we have all of them selected by default and we can check confirmed or unconfirmed, canceled, late, you know, whatever applies to the current situation and change it as needed. For this, we're just going to hit confirmed. So that confirms the order and lets everyone know that that one is set in stone. It's good to go. Again, we do have the option to auto confirm, which we do recommend using uh, as long as the system schedule and times are all set up uh, as they're needed and no handwritten reservations are taken anywhere else. So you'll be on the overview screen, which just gives you the complete overview of the customer's order is their name, phone number, email, um, any payment information and the rentals that they bought or tickets that they bought in whatever case applies. Customer info gives you the ability to change the customer's information or apply promo codes as well as resend order confirmations or choose not to send a review email if you have that set up. The trips tab allows you to change information about their trip. So if you know it got weather related rain out, then you can go to the arrival date, change that to the 13th. Um, they instead they want to go at 10 a.m. We'll just go ahead and change that 13th at 10 a.m. Oops, 10 a.m and hit save and that is going to move those as long as there's nothing in their way. It will move those orders. It gave me that green confirmation so I know we're good and they're moved. Um, and you can change prices, ticket information. If you're 
hesitant, just click on it. As long as you don't hit save anywhere, save, move, um, nothing will actually change. If you're making edits to a past reservation, this will be checked. It needs to be checked. If you have a question about anything generally in the system, hovering over something, especially a question mark, will give you a lot of info, as well as this help icon up here in the top right. That goes directly to our help center as a side note here. So that's my admin view in the help center, but it does go to the actual help center for you if you're not logged in as an admin, that is. All right, so payments tab. This gives you information about the payments type taken on this order. So this is cash has been taken, the date it was taken, um, the amount that was taken. Now, if I want to add a tip to this order, like after the fact, or if I want to add an additional payment, say they add on another jet ski or something, then we're going to have to add an additional payment. We would add a payment type, um, select the payment amount, type it in. If there's any balance due on the order, it will auto fill that payment amount. Select the payment option and hit confirm. And this is if you're actually taking payment on an order. Now, if you're taking tips or deposits, it would be considered an extra payment. So you would click extra payment, choose from tip or deposit and which piece of equipment that this applied to. Um, and then hit confirm. And that will run that. Uh, it'll take you to the credit card screen if you're on credit card to run a credit card. Now, if you've already ran a credit card, you can add a payment to a credit card. It will be in this little menu uh, on payments under the credit card information as well as it will be a drop down. It'll be under this last payment option here and it'll have like credit card and then the last four of theirs that's on file for their order. So below we just have each piece of equipment slash ticket um, that is on this order and the information about you know, subtotal, if there's any discounts, what the taxes were, if there's any booking fees, what that percentage was. Um, just exact numbers to give you an idea of what it costs per each. This is handy if you are um, experiencing a occasion where somebody walks up with 12 people wanting to rent six jet skis and everyone wants to pay separately. <laughs> so you can do that on here uh, easily just by seeing how much each one is, adding those together, and then adding a payment type and just keep adding a payment type. So notes. This is an area where the guest notes will be if there are any, as well as partner comments if you have any, or if you'd like to add any there. Those are only seen by the partners. They are not seen by the customers. The log gives you information about everything that's happened from the order. So I'm the only one that has messed with this, but you can see where I created the order. Um, and then I changed it to confirmed on, this is cart state item state change to confirm. So, that means each one of those pieces of equipment were set to confirm, which are individual trips inside of an order. Um, you can see where I changed the schedule and the date, and that, again, will be repeated because I did it for both. Now, if I only did it for one, then it would only show one. And this does record who does it, what time they do it, and what happens. So it's very handy when you're trying to figure out, you know, if something's gone wrong with the order, etc. So customer history, this allows you to pull a history of this particular customer. So if I wanted to just find everyone with the walk-up name, which I probably made many of these in my tutorials, I could hit find orders. That's going to show me every single one of these walk-up orders that I have created and when they were created and what and what payment was taken, etc. So again, um, this is just pulling it for that particular customer, which in my case is walk-up, but if your customers have history with you, you could find that here. One more thing in the order overview that I would like to cover is refunds and cancellations. So if we were going to just refund this a partial amount, let's go over how we would do that. So we'll go to payments and then have we have cash here for 152.60 we're going to refund that payment. So if we want to do a partial refund, we could do so here. Let's just type in $10 and it processes that refund. So with a credit card, it's the same process, except it's a credit card refund instead of a cash refund. 
and it does process back to their account um, for a credit card in about three to five business days, just as a side note there. Now, it does say balance due because there is now a balance due on this order because the total does not match the paid. That is one important thing I would like to note um, for everyone. Totals should always match paids. You never want your total not to match your paid. Now, if in fact you only took 142 and that's all you want, you need to adjust your trips amount to match that new paid amount. So I need to lower these however much is necessary in order to make sure that my totals always match my pays. Now it could be a little tricky with sales tax involved, but totals should always match pays. And there are a lot of problems when it comes to reporting when totals don't match pays. So please always make sure these match. This orange should be a great indicator that something is wrong. Now it has a positive balance too because the total is uh, over the paid amount. So we're underpaid, so we need $10. Now, if we were overpaid, that still is bad. We do not want the total and the paid to not match, regardless if it's over or under. So the balance due, if it was over payment, would be a negative balance, showing that you owe money back to the customer. Now, if it is a payment for a tip, please make sure you add a payment type, select extra payment, um, and select tip and apply that to a portion of this rental for the amount of the tip. If it is a tip, do not uh, run it as a payment amount without selecting extra payment. That is going to cause you to have a total that does not match the paid, okay? Very important. Those always match. So we've done a refund for $10 on this order, but say now we want to cancel this order altogether. So we're going to go ahead and refund payment again. Now it's going to give us the total amount paid is $142.60. We'll hit OK. Now we have a balance due of the total. And so now our totals still don't match our paid, and so that's a problem. So now, since this order has been fully refunded, we need to cancel it. So in order to cancel this, we would process that refund first. We'll go to status to change it, change it to canceled, and hit set status. The reason, this is just for testing, so that's what I'm going to put in here, but you can put weather or whatever. If there is a fee associated with the cancellation, so if you charge a $5 fee for cancellations in a 24 hour period, so then you can do that here. But you need to make sure your refund would have then been $5 less than $152.60. It should have been $140. My math is terrible. $148? $147? You know, somewhere around in there to match. And then you would have $152.60 due and you'd have a paid amount of $5. So go back to that status again. And type back into my testing. If I had a fee, I would put it in here. If you don't have a fee and you're refunding the total amount, or in other words, if your paid amount is zero and your total is still full, we'll leave the fee alone. This does have a fee box for each trip on the order. And then you can send a cancellation email or text message or both. I'm going to uncheck those for the purpose of this video. And then you have to confirm that the order has been refunded. It's important that you refund the order prior to canceling it so you can confirm that it has been canceled. Now hit save and this is going to process that cancellation. So now it takes that um, those two jet skis and puts them back in available equipment, which is important, as well as total now matches the paid. So we are good there. So that is a customer info screen. And there are a few other buttons that you can click and play around with here. Um, don't hesitate to click and play around um, inside of the system. If something goes terribly, terribly wrong, which it can with calendar controls, but most other things, it's super easy to fix. It's simple. You just pop right up in here to the support chat, click on that, and type in your information, send us a message saying, hey, I did something. And then generally we can figure it out and help you get it back to the way it's supposed to be, um, usually pretty quickly. 
So a member of our support team will get with you as soon as you hit start chat. So on this help icon here, that is that help center, which I cannot show you because I am logged in at the moment, but I will here in a minute. And then my account gives you account information. I'm just going to touch on these little menu items while I'm up there, but I can change my password from here if I want to on my profile. Um, as well as search the system. So if I want to see, you know, let's just type walk up. And it's going to give me every order with walk up associated with it. So that's just a quick way to search the orders. And we went over the navigation. All right. So let's get back and see where we are at. We have touched on all the overview or the views. Um, as well as a new reservation, both from the matrix and the new reservation button. Um, one thing I didn't cover is these little gray icons. This just means they're in the past. Um, you can't click on them from the matrix when they're in the past because they've already passed, but you can create a new reservation as a past reservation in order to select those past days and times if you have something you need to enter. Okay, so moving on into this next section, we are going to be covering mostly admin related stuff. So any reservationists, um, any of this is not going to apply to you. If you do have an admin level account or owner level account, um, this is all the settings, reports, um, important information that you can use. Again, reservations, you're not going to have access to any of this. So to start, we will pop into reports. We have many different types of reports that you can use, but I would say most commonly used is the sales report. So we'll cover that one. Um, feel free to explore the other reports if you're needing detailed information. They're pretty self-explanatory. Sales report is probably the most complicated one. So on sales report, we have a date from and date to. This is our date range for the report. Um, for this particular report, we're just going to pull last month. So we'll select last month's date range. Um, if you leave everything as it is, this is called an open report. It pulls all information. So except for any canceled um, orders or payments collected. So, but it will pull everything else. Now, if you need to see specific things, either, you know, by equipment, agent, trips, schedule times, you can do so here and make that selection. And we have a variety of different ones or just by payment method. You can do that as well. Now, there is another box here. This is a new feature that we have recently added. This is called um, separate tickets and options. And I'll pull a report for each to show you the difference. So let's go ahead and generate our first open report. Now, actually, I want to add a tax to that just to see what you can do fully. You can add tax to this um, new report. So we'll pull another one. Now, let's pull a report without it. Generate that. Okay, so the reports will contain the same information. It's just a matter of how they are organized. So by default, it will have that checked, but you can um, not if you want to. And there are settings for that default in your system settings as well. So we'll pull the HTML views for these reports. Now, um, this is the one that is separated. So it has my trips, that I have in that date range, um, their quantity, their average prices, um, they may be sold at different prices. You may see a, a roundabout estimate of average price here. And this is not always the price that they were sold at is what I'm trying to say. Um, subtotal, as a subtotal of the, that quantity, um, the tax associated with that and the with tax totals. Now it does this for every trip um, as well as for every ticket, I'm sorry, tickets as well as trips. Um, it will calculate all of that up at the bottom. Now, as you can see on this report, our tickets are here. These are our items, otherwise known as tickets. And they are not ordered by trip type. They are simply just in a list. Um, and then we also have our additional options, which is tax, non-tax. I can pull that here. So it what this essentially does is separates your options from your tickets. Um, this is handy if you have some options that are non-taxable, 
um, or something specific like that, you want to break down your options from your trips. Um, we also have all the revenue totals down here below, as well as booking fees collected and grand totals. Now that is the separate tickets and options report. On the second report I generated, it's I did not have that checked. So this is the same report, but it gives me a breakdown. And as you see, you have different trip types here. So we have all kinds of different trip types. Um, we have schedule times associated with them and quantities. And um, as you see here, this option was associated with that trip. So that is where that option went. Now it is not totaled in this um, report. And that is one downside to this report why we have created that second report for you guys um, and revenue totals are exactly the same now one other thing i want to cover on reports real quick is if you include payments collected a general disclaimer here payments collected this will be pretty accurate because there's one payments collected payments collected can show um, some differences and what some might consider inaccuracies due to multiple trips being associated with a mul or one single payment or multiple payments with multiple trips, it can get quite complicated. So we do not recommend using payments collected, but for a simple report like this, it works perfectly fine. Now, this particular report is pulled by arrival. So this is when the trips arrived through September 1st through September 30th. Of course, they were probably booked in advanced. So um, that payments collected section of this report pulls um, still by arrival. And that's why there might be some minor um, differences with your numbers there. So in order to get a um, payments report would be by the date the payment actually occurred, you would go to reports and payment report, and that's going to give you a report for your payments based on the date that they actually happened and not the date that the trip happened, the date that the actual transaction happened. So this is going to be more in line with what you're going to see depositing into your bank account. So that is reports. There are a variety of different ones. We won't cover all of them in here. If you ever are curious, you can visit our help center to view um, information about the different types of reports or simply just go to them and pull one and see what comes up. That's my favorite method of doing things. <laughs> so on settings, we have some different things here. We have calendar controls, which is uh, an advanced set of controls. Uh, if you would like a tutorial on this or any information, there are um, a lot of videos I've created on each individual control as well as an overview of each control. I am happy to provide tutorials on counter controls if you would like to learn. But as a beginner user, um, I would not use any other counter control other than Disable Trips for Online Booking. Um, you can use that one. I would not use any of the other ones until you get more familiar with the system. So we'll save calendar controls for a whole series of other videos. So on resources, we have trips and equipment. So we're going to set everything up for you when we do your onboarding. But if you need to add any trips or add any equipment, of course, you can always reach out to us to support, but you can add as well as edit any existing trips in these settings. So we'll go to equipment just because it's really simple. We'll touch on it fast. Equipment is where all your equipment lives. Well, we have a lot because this is our test account um, and we use this for a variety of different things. So let's just go and find um, one piece of equipment so we can look, see what it looks like here. So we'll just go to this horse, 90 horse for our standard pontoon. So uh, on here, you just have your name, a description, max tickets and priority trips. Um, this is just a trip that it could be associated with. It only does have one association right now, so that's why there's only one checked. Now, priority is kind of a complicated one to explain. Um, we will set that up for you when we do your intake, but if you need to add additional equipment, priority might be something we need to look at adjusting, but we would be happy to help set that up for you. So moving on to settings, resources, and trips. Oh, I'm a little snafu there. So inside the trip settings, 
we have the all the trips listed <clears throat> excuse me below um so we're just going to pop into the first one here to see what it looks like so this is the 24 foot pontoon rentals this is a trip name where we can adjust that this is set as a rental so it's going to show on the matrix view if it was set as a tour it would show on the tours view so <clears throat> We have some availability settings, and this is going to be disabled trip, disabled direct online bookings, or disabled affiliate booking. Um, disabling the trip disables it entirely. That's if you're never going to use it again. Um, disabled direct online bookings is if you want to like set up that merchandise trip, for instance. We can actually go set that one as disabled direct online bookings. This is just something we're using internally, and we don't want anybody else to see it. So we'll set that up. Um, disable affiliate booking, disable trip shock. Um, please notify support if um, you want to disable affiliate booking. It does send it currently to a queue. This might be adjusted later in the future, but it, currently it does go to a queue and it just takes a few seconds for me to approve it. So on the description, this is that information that's going to show first on the booking portal, like in that little landing page of the booking portal. Um, departure details, it's just departure information. This one's not a very good example for that. So we're going to go to the jet ski because I built that one out earlier. So this has some HTML in it to show you what yours is probably going to end up looking like. Um, we do add this HTML. It just makes it look fancier on the booking portal. We'll kind of pull the booking portal up as a example here so you can see what it looks like when we set up HTML like this. So, oh, I went way past it, man. Just skipping right along today. All right, so see how it is bolding these areas and it's getting, we're getting good spaces in here. Though I did miss a space here. <laughs> but yes, um, this sets up a more like just presentable, clean looking, um, easy to read and organized booking details section because usually this uh, section is what you want people to read the most. Um, it's going to contain all the questions they would normally call and ask about. So it's great to have this filled out. And again, this is stuff that we normally set up during intake, but um, we can help with any adjustments as well if you need to. But um, I know nobody just going to know HTML off the top of their brain. So um, we do set this all up for you. And you can simply even just poke in a bunch of information and we'll go in and clean it all up. Um, just whatever you prefer. Now, location address is just the address of this particular trip. Agreement terms is that cancellation policy that they have to agree to upon booking. Um, tax is just the tax associated with this, and the booking fee is the booking fee associated with this particular order. Um, on media, we have the main image, and then we have a place to add additional images. I've only added this one stock photo in here just to give you an example today, but um, you can add a bunch of additional images as well as a YouTube video that is at the end of your carousel of images on your booking portal. On the tickets sc op or screen, we have the option to control our tickets. So the ticket names, if you need to make adjustments to these, uh, support can do this. Um, it's just not on this system, so it's a little more complicated, but just send us a message. Um, hey, I want to capitalize H and R because that looks more professional, <laughs> then yes, we can do that for you. No problem. Um, just send us what you'd like and we'll get that changed. Duration is set in minutes. This is one that is commonly misunderstood. It is not set in hours. It is set in minutes. So that's why it says 60 for a one hour rental. Um, we have updated this uh, little icon here to let you know that it is set in minutes. So price this is the default price if you do not have any custom prices set up with us or that you have set up yourself then the system will always pull this default price then if you have um, ticket control prices set up with us it will pull ticket control pricing first and if uh, there's no ticket control pricing it will revert back to default so we can set Ticket control pricing is what I would call um, like seasonal pricing or blackout date pricing, etc. We can set that up in the system, no problem. We usually do that again during intake, um, and it also has to be done yearly. So please keep that in mind. 
available. This is how many tickets are available for this um, rental. When you were talking about rentals, uh, the available tickets doesn't matter nearly as much as the ticket available per time. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to schedules, but just wanted to make that note here. It doesn't matter as much. Um, trip shock available is how many that you're allowing trip shock to sell. Ticket description just gives a description of the ticket as well as we can set this as a default so it comes up first when people select it, um, as well as if it's a child ticket or internal only ticket. An internal only ticket will only show internally. It will not show online or on TripShock. And you can add an additional ticket, add as many as you'd like um, by just clicking the add ticket and add another ticket button. Um, and you can order the tickets as well. They have these little arrows to order them as you see fit. Options. This is that place I was talking about where we have this custom options um, to set up. So this is an instance where we've just simply asked if they need a boater's test. Um, we could put yes, and we could even put a price here if we wanted to. Like say you charge $3 for your boater's test, we can put $3 in here. They can pay for it ahead of time, and then when they get on site, you don't have to worry about payment. Um, you've already taken that um, payment and it will be separated on your report um, for tax purposes. We can disable it, require it, or make it an internal only option. Um, soon to be, we will also have a trip shock versus online option as well, um, just so that you can further customize your options, what you want to ask and where you want to ask it. Um, moving on to availability, this is like seasonal availability. This is what we call an evergreen. Um, I'm old school, so I call it an evergreen, but it's also called a not a seasonal trip. So that just means that um, if you don't disable it, it's just going to keep being available forever on and on every day and time that's currently set up unless you set up calendar controls, custom scheduling, or send that to um, support saying, you know, I only want to be available March 1st through October 31st every year. Then we can change that by just unchecking this and setting a valid from and to date and we would do that like I said every year. Um, even if it's a seasonal trip unless you always offer every single time um, that you have set up then you still want to do some custom scheduling every year. So as a side note. So just make sure it's always a good idea you know January, February send us a message here's my schedule um, we can go in and make sure that everything is what it needs to be. Default closeout time, this is that time I was uh, talking about earlier in the video about the um, time that the boats have to be in by. So we call it a closeout time, and that means no boats can be out past 5 o'clock. That's how this is currently set up. Cutoff, this is a cutoff for days. So if you want um, 24 hours or more set up as a cutoff for people to be able to make a reservation, so they have to make a reservation 24 hours in advance or longer, you would set the cutoff here. If you want it to be, you know, hours, um, it is actually in schedules. But also we have days of the week. If you only offer this trip, say, on Wednesdays or only on weekends or something, you can just simply disable all other days of the week by default um, by unchecking the days. Schedules. Um, use schedules should always be checked. Pretty much in every instance. Um, there are some very unique ones where it might not be, but you schedule should always be checked. So we have schedule set up right now, 9 a.m., 10, 11, and 12. Um, cut off hours. This is what I was talking about. If you want to set an hourage instead of, you know, 24 hours and up, you can set it here and set it by time. So, you know, I want 18 hours on my 9 a.m., but I only need like 10 on my 10 or 11 or etc. So you can set that cutoff here and customize it by time. Minimum tickets um, should usually just be blank. Uh, there are some instances where minimum tickets is preferred. A lot of times this is used in parasailing where they have a minimum ticket requirement of two. Um, this is a minimum ticket per purchase. Completely optional to set up, but you can set up a minimum ticket per purchase if you would like to. Maximum tickets, this is the maximum tickets allowed at that particular time. So at 9 a.m., max tickets is five allowed at that time. And there are five pieces of equipment associated with this trip, so that is the correct number. If you had 24 jet skis, um, each, you know, have one ticket option available on each, then uh, you would have 24 on your max tickets. 
Um, let's move on to, oh, quickly, you can disable them. Now, using the disabled inside of settings, resources, and trips, which is where we are currently located at, um, is a default. Anything in here, um, me and my team will always refer to these settings as default settings or trip settings. Um, default or trip settings means that if there are no custom things set, these are the settings. So if you disable something here, it is disabled. You cannot open it. <laughs> um, your staff cannot open it. Nobody can open it until you uncheck that disable button. Um, that's including on the matrix view. Equipment. This gives you a list of all of your equipment as well as a place to set up their max places and priority. You can adjust max places in here to be different than what it is in settings, resources, equipment. This is just due to flexibility. It will, when you add the equipment, set it as default from what it is in settings, resources, equipment, but you can change it in here as well as setting priority. Um, if they are in this particular order, they will be in this order, but um, you can set priority to help maintain an order if needed. Marketing, this is where we set up that custom, uh, custom confirmation text message. The second text message that's sent when a customer creates an order, um, you can put anything you'd like in here. Um, we have some customers that um, even put emojis in here and sent those. Um, just as a, we appreciate your business. Um, there are a lot of people that put, you know, please arrive early or this much time early, or please go to this address. The one in Google is always wrong or um, just something in here to let them know either about parking or timing or something really important that most people miss. Um, we all know that uh, people have trouble actually reading through listings. A lot of people just skim over things. So sometimes the best way to get the information out is to just uh, put it in everything. So we recommend just go ahead and put that in the confirmation text message if it's really important, like arriving early or else you're late. <laughs> um, a lot of times there's paperwork and stuff and you don't want them to arrive right when they're supposed to depart. So that makes sense. And um, you can put that all in here and Hopefully that will get to them um, better than email or uh, reading the listing details. So coming in text message form might help out a little bit. Um, booking portal main trip message. These are ways to add messages uh, to your booking portal page. So this one is that um, main message and this one is a trip calendar message. So this is a great way to like, if you have, let's say you have 20 foot pon pontoons, 24 foot pontoons, 28 foot pontoons, and you have two of those smaller ones and one of the bigger ones, but you're medium size, you have 30 of them. Um, you can redirect people, uh, like say I'm on that 28 foot pontoon listing. I can have like, Hey, uh, click this link to go look at our 24 foot pontoon and that sits right on top of that calendar view so that when they're looking at that calendar view and they're like, hey, that day and time is not available that I want, then it just, they can click that link it redirects them to 24 foot and uh, hopefully gets them something that they would still enjoy. So booking portal trip date specific message is just another way to add a message inside the booking portal. Um, this is like an announcement message. And if you're curious, a lot of these messages and their you know, settings kind of confuse even me to this day. So you can hover over the little question icons and they will let you know exactly what that particular setting does, which is helpful. So that is pretty much the trip settings in a nutshell. When you create one, um, it just goes to the same exact thing page by page by page um, and allows you to just set it up from scratch with a blank sheet so and each trip has its own settings so if you want to close it you can just click on it again it minimizes it back down and you can go back into another one easy peasy so next we are going to cover system setup configuration so how you get to this is just settings system setup and then configurations go here we have the account settings and um, this is the account title email phone number um, if you want sms notifications that's here 
um, as well as the logo and the URL for the booking portal. So if you already have everything linked into your website, just keep in mind, if you change the URL to the booking portal, um, you will have to change the links on your website as well. Usually we do uh, also set this up for you with a basic one that matches your company um, information at the time of onboarding. So order settings, this gives you a place to turn on and off your email notifications or change them. If you'd like to have email notifications for specific things, um, you can do waivers, order, trip chef order, all, um, including or excluding internal orders, as well as turn them off. Um, SMS text notifications on by default, and you can change that as well. The calendar setting notifications, um, this just gives you a notification if calendar uh, settings are changed. Auto confirm, this is that setting I was talking about. So if an order comes through and um, the availability is in your system, an order wouldn't come through if there was an availability in your system, but um, when it does, uh, it would auto confirm if this was on. So it would instead change that to confirmed instead of paid. Um, this is recommended, highly recommended if you um, use the system correctly and the way it was intended and designed, load all your schedule, keep everything up to date, um, make any internal reservations inside of the system and not uh, on like a Google Calendar or a piece of paper or something, then definitely have auto confirm on um, if you don't do any of those things and you keep your schedule up to date with all of your current bookings. Again, there's no harm in keeping your system up to date and inputting your external reservations um, that you have made outside of Waveres inside of the system. You can put those in the system. We do not charge for internally made orders. Um, there's really no drawback to that. The only fee associated with an internal order would be if you used a credit card and, and that would just be your normal um, credit card processing fees as well as the authorized.net ones if you use authorized.net which currently is required but later this year it very well may change so homepage view by default that's where you can set your default view um, like the landing page it's set to the matrix view and you can change it to any one of those views order options this just gives you orders um, or options on the orders if you want blank default tickets, um, expanded orders on trip page. Some of this is set up by default and what we would recommend. Boater test option. If you have a boater test, you can put the link in for the boater test here and you can add that to your trips. And so we'll send that link. Uh, enable extra payments after booking creation and enable gratuity for direct orders. Um, this is a way to turn off that gratuity option in direct orders. So if you were inside of your booking portal, which would be direct orders, you can see that it does have this, uh, would you like to add gratuity? This is at the time of booking, they can add gratuity. If you wanna turn that off, you can turn it off, just uncheck that button and hit save. Site settings, um, it's just time zone and admin password. Booking portal settings, this allows you to rearrange the um, listings on your booking portal. We have quite a few. Again, this is a, a, a test account, so we do have quite a few um, things that we've tested throughout the years that are on here. So you can ignore that. You will probably not have as many. And you can just simply click and drag them to reorder them. Um, you can also allow TripShock reviews on your booking portal if you would like to. Um, if you do uh, have an affiliate with TripShock, you can use the reviews that you get on there and display them on your booking portal. The light frame is just a place where we can get the code to add a light frame onto your website. If you would prefer a light frame over a URL um, redirect, um, not really redirect, but opens a new tab with a new URL and um, we don't really recommend using the light frame system, but we do have that available if you would like to use it. Um, it all just depends on what your preferences are. Payment types. We have a variety of different payment types that are set up by default. This is indicated by the gray section. 
These are default payment types that you can't really modify or delete, but you can set which one you want to come up as default. Ours, like I said earlier, is on card hold. Um, you can add additional payment options. So if you come up here, you can add a new payment type and that allows you to add um, one of these custom payment types. Now we have pay on arrival and this credit card external terminal on here. If you have an uh, external POS that you use, something of that nature, we can set that up so that you can still record that order and put that order in your system um, for reporting or um, for availability and <laughs> keeping your availability up to date. Um, you can create a custom payment type and it will take the full payment at the time of sale. It doesn't actually take the payment. It just records that the payment was taken. A deferred payment just means that um, no payment will be taken after the sale. I'll pay at a later time. And there are situations where that might be useful, but um, if you're curious, you can always reach out to support for help with that. Daily manifest settings um, is a manifest that can be sent by email if you choose to, um, either for today or tomorrow at a particular time. And this just sends a manifest via email to the email provided. And just gives you a paper record at you know this particular time um, that is what uh, was on the manifest for that day. Social media links as a way to add in any of your social media links as well as a direct website link. Um, and this just allows on your booking portal, there will be another little button here that will look like a little world and that will take them back to your website, which we usually set that up at the time of onboarding you as well. Thermal print settings. Um, this is all the printer settings. If you are you know, curious about setting up a printer um, in detail, I would recommend reaching out to support for this. But um, if you are highly tech savvy, you can come in here and just see what is available and see how you want it set up. This is exactly how it's going to print out. Um, this is for all payments and this is for cash payments. And the boarding pass as well has its own set of customization and you can put in whatever you would like. Um, as well as some other options and settings for the printer. Authorize.net settings, um, don't ever mess with this. This is for support only. You can't save it without a password. It is, um, if it is not set correctly, uh, when you take a payment in the system, it will record that you've taken the payment. It will tell you that you've taken the payment, but you won't have actually taken the payment. So please don't mess with uh, any of the authorize.net settings without um, support. Report settings. Um, this is that ticket and options setting that we went over earlier in reports. If you want it set, always checked as default. You check this. If you don't, you uncheck it and you hit save. So that is system setup configurations. Next, we're going to jump into users. So for users, we have a variety of different users here. This is our test account. Again, these are people, um, in our system. So the owner is the main user. The admin level um, is a admin level user, which is what we are currently in. And reservationist status um, is a reservationist login. I don't know, we can actually show you how to do that. We need to suspend this account, but I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, and there also is a report level login, which is basically a view only mode. So in order to register a new user or add a new user, you click register, enter the username that they want that to be, or that you want that to be their email and password, and then just give that to them and they will be able to log in after you hit register. Also after you hit register is when you can change the, um, the permissions on the account. So I'll show you how to do that too in a second. So we want to take this login here and we want to suspend it. So if they, you know, say we lost this employee, um, we would go ahead and suspend this account. Yes, do it. Um, that is now their login will no longer work. That's what that's saying. It's user has been blocked. And we're going to do, so as you can see here, 
um, admin level does not allow you to suspend until you change their privilege group. So if I were to change their privilege group to reservations, um, now I can suspend that account. All right, so if you want to change email, you just click on the little pencil next to email and you can change it there. If you need to reset a password, say they don't know their password anymore and they can't get into their account, here, click reset password. This is going to send them a link to their email to click on. Um, they're going to click on the link in the email and it's going to send them another email with a temporary password. So then they're going to use that temporary password to log into the system. Now, we did go over how to change the privilege status, but I want to show you what it looks like um, if you are a reservationist versus an admin. Admin, of course, I have all of these settings, um, but a reservationist would have a slightly different set of settings. So we're going to change that privilege group to reservations and hit change. Now, if I were to log out and log back in, you're going to see that I have a totally different list here. Um, only the views, tours, orders, um, as well as that bounce list that just gives you uh, information about the an email that didn't get received or did get received and what it was and what happened. So it gives you information on that. Um, it gives them a link to the booking portal as well as our live chat. So their login access is restricted from being able to see reports um, in any settings with the system. So now that we are back on a um, admin level login, this time I'm on my support admin level login. So you will see this new support section. Um, you can just ignore that. You will not see that. And we'll go through the rest of the menu here. So we have wave ranges, which are, um, it can be a complicated topic, but essentially it is a dynamic price control. So we can set up um, price increases to trigger based on tickets sold. Promotions, it's a simple place to set up your promo codes, um, edit your promo codes and view any associated orders with them. You can just hit create to create a new one. It will walk you through the process. And we do have detailed guides on promo codes um, as well as dynamic pricing in our help center. Um, shortly, we also will have an email um, video that's going to come out about how to set up these each different types of emails that goes into great depth with each one and what you can do but generally um, things are set here by default review will be turned off by default it's on our account but it will be turned off um, and reminder will most likely be on confirmation everything else will be set to default your users or your customers um, will get all the information that they need when they book as long as it's all in the booking details of the order but you can choose to come in here and add some additional information again we do cover that in depth in our help center as well as some videos coming up shortly cancellations the same these are all the same um, you just in order to move to each one you just click on one and they have different settings at the top as you'll notice but they're all associated with that particular email style now, if you want to send yourself a test email to see what uh, your creation looked like, you can just send test email, but make sure you're on the right one because it's going to send, for this one, it's going to send confirmation. If I go to cancellation, it'll send cancellation and so on and so forth. Um, one other feature that we recently added was the ability to export your email list. And this is just an email list of all the customers that have booked in that date range that you select. It's just going to um, check out a report for you to be able to uh, copy all those emails if you have any remarketing or anything that you send. And then we have the booking portal. We do have some integrations as well um, and some settings for integrations. If you use Google Reserve, you'll know it. You'll uh, It has to go through TripShock in order to use Google Reserve. Um, we have that TripShock one. You can sign up with TripShock here. If you're already signed up, you can log into your extranet from here. Wave logic. This allows you to enable the wave logic, which is our dynamic pricing controls. Um, if you want to enable it, you can do so. 
and also just reach out to support with help for the wave logic if you're not super tech savvy um dynamic pricing can be a little confusing so we'll be happy to help set something up for you and then we also have the werewolf integration um, this allows you to link with werewolf um, for any waivers that you may have if you want to go to digital waivers we do have uh, integration with werewolf that allows you to connect your werewolf system to our system to show it who has signed their waivers and who hasn't um, can plenty handy if you use a werewolf system um, all other ones in here are going to be support stuff so that pretty much covers it um, yeah, I think so. I think that pretty much covers everything. Of course, if you have any questions at all, um, we do have a very great help center that you can go to um, that can answer any of your questions. And um, if you can't get an answer in there, that's, you know, fine. Some of the more tactical stuff or if you're having troubleshooting problems, um, issues like that, you can always just reach out to us on support chat. Uh, also, give us a call. We are here and on support um, every day, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. And we provide email, chat, text messaging, and uh, phone support. So feel free to reach out to us in any way that's most convenient to you. I always just recommend the chat because it's right here. And it's just it's just too easy. <laughs> but um, we do offer after hours emergency support as well. If something has gone detrimentally wrong, it is a time sensitive situation. Um, we, uh, if we see that, just go ahead and submit a, this will actually come up to say, um, sorry, we are unavailable. You can either send us an email or you can submit that form. It's the same as an email generally. And it will let us know that something's wrong. Um, just simply put, you know, like emergency, um, sorry i know it's after hours or you know like something of that nature to let us know hey might want to take a look at this um, if we take a look at it and see that it is a time sensitive manner uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can and that is for all of our after hours emergency support and it's all time sensitive and that will usually be me that reaches out to you um and i usually um do the after hours emergency support um, the phone is not a great way to reach on after hours. It's best just to do the chat form or the um, text messaging or email. But we keep a pretty constant monitoring on those as long as we're awake. So um, we'll get back to you, especially if it's time sensitive. And I think that about covers it um, for here at WaveRes. Welcome to WaveRes if you're new. If you're not, um, I'm glad you watched my video. And... Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks.